the ice must flow. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Everybody thinks I named it after something else. I don't know. Uh, it's I, it's I, random. And the funniest part is when people, when they tweet me, they mean to tweet Renee, they'll say, oh, you and Ice Warm are such a great couple. Yeah. <laughs> They call me, like, they get me and Ice Worm mixed up all the time. I'm like, no, I'm like, wrong person. Wrong person. <laughs> you know. Very different person. I, ice Worm's cool. We don't, I don't no, roll no, like yeah. that. I love Ice Worm. Yeah, I don't roll like that. Two different people. <laughs> but then, like, everybody would be like, oh, Ice Worm, you're the one who did, because he's always doing stuff for the network. I'm like, nope, but me. I'd be glad to oh, credit, like, but it's oh, not yeah, me. I take all the credit. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I, uh taped the show when they lost it and I did it. Yeah, that was so me. I'm like, no, that wasn't me. I'm all over that. All right, cool. Let me just check back here. Do, 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 do. I was just recording some of that. Let's see what we have. Uh, so you're not getting 16 by 9 from me. That's weird. Yeah, I noticed that. That happens sometimes uh, because I'm on an old version of Skype and the new versions of Skype do all this weird processing of the images. Mm -hmm. So actually what we do with Twit is we have an old version of Skype on the machines at Twit, and when they call me, they use the old version because the new version just doesn't work well with the uh, Blackmagic devices. Yeah. All right. I'm definitely sending you 16.9 because that's what it looks like in the preview. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just weird that it doesn't. Dude. Maybe, um, let, me, um, let, me, let me try to call you back. Eh. Okay, we can give it a shot. Usually, usually that's just the way it happens. Okay, hold on. We're almost gonna start at seven thirty. Oh, We're so look. close. I love that you can see that. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. See, Jay, you can't obsess about this for. Uh, okay, I won't. That's fine. Because if you keep obsessing, we won't have the podcast. All right, just let me listen to this real quick. I don't. I just remember I was looking into XSplit because Chad recommended yeah. it to me, and then I was like, "Oh, I don't want to have to change that. machines." Whoa! Right, right. <laughs> when I set the studio up, I had to. Well, I didn't have to, but. Yeah, I hear a hiss, but you're gonna take that out. Yeah, so. I'm gonna take it out. Ooh, okay, dang. cool. He's the podcasting dog. Now, now your background. It's okay. All right. Cool. 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 Dude. Uh, Deja vu. <laughs> Diddy said that they're doing Genghis Grill really weird. I have to say this before we start. So they used to give him the bowl, a Genghis Grill. It's like a Mongolian grill place. But now they give him a card, walk him up to the place, and they dip the sauce for him. He Who said he this? hates it. Genghis Grill. What? I don't, where does Diddy live? I can't remember. Oh. But it's weird. I don't know if you all have a Genghis Grill, but I like Genghis Grill. I don't have a Genghis Grill. The Mongolian barbecues yeah. places that I've been to... You just tell them, and then they, they do it. You don't actually get their that care. Oh, more, you don't do it yourself. That sounds oh, like okay. authentic, more authentic. Yeah, that's more what, authentic. This is a chain thing. Yeah, but, uh, okay, yeah, like there. BDs or something like that. Okay, um, <sighs> so, you have any questions for us before we get started? Yeah, it's just casual talk. You, you, yeah. you, no, it's you, good. You, you're a pro. <laughs> <laughs> He's a, probably been on a guest on more podcasts than I've done, so. Uh, by probably tweet, that would be yes that would be yes <laughs> thank you i have no idea how many podcasts i've made well i know how many um buzz out loud you did you remember 1500 yeah 1588 1588 that's nuts yeah oh. i'll be dead before we've that many and we're on uh 800 tnts now oh, see yeah. that's awesome 818 yeah yeah all right. Okay. Yep. Let's um. Let's do let's it. Get ready. Let's do it. Coming to you from Louisville, Kentucky. It's the Valentine Cast with your interviewing couple, Jay and Renee Valentine. <laughs> Today is August 14th, 2013. 
and this is episode 121. And uh, a, welcome to another show. Yeah, it's a very special show. Special we, show. Yeah. We're because doing we have a wonderful guest. We do. We uh, do. We have a special techie guest, Mr. Tom Merritt. Hey, yeah. How's it going, guys? Hi, Tom. It's going great. Uh, just so of those of you who don't know Tom, and if you don't, shame on you. Uh, Tom has done a variety of shows, and uh, he really doesn't need introduction, um, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, Tom has worked for CNET and was a co-host of the late Buzz Out Loud with Molly Wood. Uh, he is now the regular host of Tech News t- Today with Sarah Lane, Ayaz Akhtar, and Jason Howell. I hope I got that right. Did you got it. Yes. And uh, he and he also is a host of many other podcasts, including one of my favorites, Sword and Laser. Love it. Uh, he lives in California with his lovely wife, Eileen R- Rivera, and their adorable dogs, Django and Sawyer. So thank you so much for being on the show, Tom. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is fun. Yeah, yeah. it's awesome. Yeah, so... Um, We've we've seen Tom off and on yeah. uh, since we've been involved in Frog Pants, but you've probably seen him before. Oh Frog yeah, Pants, right. Oh yeah. Um, um, it goes back to when I first started listening to ELR. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, back in 2005. Well, that's Frog Pants. <laughs> I still consider that Frog Pants, even though whatever. Yeah, right. Proto Frog Pants. Pro- oh yeah. yeah proto. When, when when it was Andrew and Scott, Ryan and Obsidian, you know, Obsidian. <laughs> Yeah, I, I went back and listened to a, because today was just a throwback day. I went back and listened to one of the episodes, and I was like, oh, man, it sounded like a city was in a closet, you know. It, I mean, it was, it was great. So it was like 2005, 2006, because I had went to um, um, a Dom- Lotus Notes um, conference. I was a, Dom- a Domino administrator. Um, I, well, I, was, I started one as 97, and then 2007 is when we moved to Exchange. So I've been do- I was doing it for 10 years, and um, I went to a conference, and I happened to score an iPod. <laughs> and I was like, huh, what can I do with this? <laughs> <laughs> and then there was a little, little category on this iPod Nano that said podcast, and I was like, what is that? And, and then that's where it all started. It started with ELR. And then, of course, went through iTunes and started going through some of the top podcasts and went to tech. And, of course, Buzz Out Loud was there. Those were the days, man. No competition. It was easy to get to the top of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely it was. That makes sense. Yeah, like, hey, we're the, we're the, only, we're the only ones out here. Top dogs. And, and it, was real, it was really nice because it was like, it was kind of like radio how I want it, you know? You know, talk radio, I want to hear, I'm in tech, I want to hear tech, or I want to hear geeky stuff. It, it took me a while to get into it, um, into podcasts. Yeah. I, I mean, I had iTunes, and I was like, eh, none of these shows really, you know, float my boat. And then the first one was the instance for me, because, you know, yeah. Yeah. wow, it was great. And so you, you didn't start out as... Um, as a podcaster. I mean, you were actually, from what I understand, a, a DJ at one point, correct? Yeah, that was my first job. You know, yesterday, uh, August 13th, was the anniversary of the first time Adam Curry posted daily source code to his RSS feed, right. which is sort of inaugurated podcasting as we know it. There's lots of controversy over who invented what, but that really was the thing mm-hmm. that kicked it off. So it's kind of, it's like podcasting is nine years old now. Yeah, uh, it's kind of crazy to think about how far it's come since then. But yeah, it's only nine years old. I've been I've been working longer than nine years. Right. Uh, and I I started in and when I was 16 years old, I started as a DJ at WGEL, my the hometown radio station. It was a country station during the day and metal at night. Awesome. Uh, I think I remember you saying that, but for some reason I wanted to. Think of you as a wicka 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 type DJ. That would have been great. <laughs> really I did a, actually, I DJed a little dance. I did some DJing of dances my first year in college. I worked for this guy, uh, but it still wasn't like scratching and mixing or anything. That would have been it awesome. was just moving. <laughs> so it was like dance music. It, it wasn't. Move, it wasn't move. Eric Van Skyhawk type stuff, was it? No, no. The, I was. <laughs> I was not Hakito level by <laughs> leaps awesome. or bounds. Yeah, um, and and so you're also um, um, a native. Um, your home is, is Illinois, so are you like um, sh- um, Chicago strong? Because we have a we have a listener out here, Mo Halen. <laughs> you probably met him at a uh, Nerdtacular, uh-huh. um, but he he is born and bred Chicago. He he lives in California now, mm. but he is 
Chicago is the Man, place. If you talk bad about Chicago or the or the any Bears sports or the Bears, the Bears. I grew up uh, hating Chicago <laughs> <laughs> because I was from Southern Illinois. I was 45 miles from the Mississippi River in downtown St. Louis. I grew up a Cardinals fan, football and baseball, oh. before the, the Cardinal football team left. Uh, a Blues fan. I have absolutely no love for the Chicago Cubs. Bears are fine. I don't mind them. That is awesome. Uh, so I, but yeah. I, I didn't look to see exactly where your hometown was. But that is but awesome. It, it so right all the time. People are like, oh, you're from Illinois. You must love Chicago. That's perfectly reasonable reaction right right because they think that that's the most famous place in illinois it's the right. dominant place most of the people well, that live east in saint, chicago east but. st louis is pretty famous east st louis is very famous <laughs> for all the wrong reasons all the it wrong was famous reasons. for us growing up because you could buy beer without an id <laughs> wow and there are plenty of other places you can still do that yeah. That is awesome. That is awesome. Well, uh, Especially when the state police, because uh, the, the city went bankrupt and they couldn't pay the police force anymore. So the state police became the police force. <laughs> and they were like, we, they were way too busy with other things. Oh, that's awesome. Busy. That is awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. Um, so we'll take a moment real quick and say hello to our chat room. What is Hi, going on, room. everybody? Oh, crap. My stuff always Hi, freezes, chat. but that's okay. Yeah. I can see people. You can um, see people? I want to say hi. Oh. Hi to Jeff Sire is here from the Great North. Hi, Jeff. Uh, we, what? How's <laughs> you would give Jeff crap? No, no, no. You, you, know Bronco. Bronco. Give, you remember you Bronco. You always give Jeff crap. Yep. <laughs> Bronco. What's going on, Bronco? Hando. Uh, hi, Hando. Uh, we have Aaron is in the house. Ashley 3 Classy. Diddy. Hi, Diddy. Uh, Muhagen. Pompous Jack. Welcome. Uh, Punk Gopher. Oh, our popcorn's almost up, punk. Almost. Uh, Seminatrix, Udella, and Zobby. Hey, Hi, everybody. everybody. Good crew in there. It oh, is. yeah. Oh, they are oh, dedicated. Yeah. They, they are so awesome. I love them. Yeah. I love those peeps. Yep, definitely, definitely. And and that's just one of the things that, you know, um, I absolutely enjoy about um, podcasting um, is the community, you know, because I actually, uh, being a part of the community that's a fan of a podcast, and then also having listeners that I hate to call them fans because they no, they're, I feel like they're family. No, yeah, they aren't fans. Fans <laughs> are people you feel like you can't get close right. to. Right. You know. Family. 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 Thank you, Tom. There and, we go. Uh, That's family out and, there. And it's awesome that we've gotten to meet a lot of them, and I consider some of them some of my best friends, and it's great. I love it. Right. Um. I first. I first got the feel for that community in the chat room at ZDTV yes. when I first started working there and realized how awesome it can be to be able to interact with the people and yeah, okay, there's some bad apples every once in a while, but by and large, people are pretty great yeah. and it's fun to, to talk with them and get enthusiastic about the same things. And so I never thought I would get that again when tech TV went away. And when I moved to CNET and started doing buzz out loud and we started to get that kind of community on our forums and our email. I was like, we got to get a chat room together. And I think it was uh, PB30 up in, in Minneapolis who made our first IRC chat room for us. Right. I was just like, yes, it's about time yeah. that, that we, got, we got back to that feel. It's yeah, amazing. it's great. And we aren't big enough yet for bad apples. Jeff said no bad apples in this That's room. Good. And it's true. We aren't big enough. And because every time you get to a certain level, there always comes some hater out of nowhere right. that wants to talk crap. Um, Scott yeah. has plenty of them now because he's way big enough to have a ton of them. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's learned to just let it roll off his back, and he just laughs about it, and he just and, goes on. And I, and, um, I know you had your bout of haters, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I would think. Well, yeah. Tom, you know, it's funny. Tom guys Tom don't get it as badly uh, as women. So I, I feel pretty lucky because I've seen some of the things that – Molly Wood, Sarah Lane, Veronica Belmont yeah, yes. have to go through with people, and it's just vicious sometimes. And I, so I've, yeah, I've, I've definitely got some people who, who've said nasty things about me here and there, but it's not that, not that often. Right. And, and so I guess for those that may not know you, Tom, I guess um, can you tell them a little bit about um, Tech News today? And, 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 and sure. Yeah. That? Well, but I mean, you mentioned Buzz Out Loud. Buzz Out Loud started as a news podcast to kind of discuss tech news and evolved into a daily half hour, 45 minute news podcast. Uh, when I left CNET to go to Twit, Leo wanted me to do that. He's like, I want you to do a daily news podcast for me. Right. Uh, so I created Tech News Today as a, as a kind of, with Buzz Out Loud as the heritage 
because Buzz Out Loud was still going at that time. Oh, yeah. So we did Tech News Today in the afternoon. Buzz Out Loud was in the morning. And I was like, we're going to be the afternoon news to their morning news. Like, we'll, we should be able to do this so that everybody can enjoy both. Mm -hmm. And eventually Buzz Out Loud did get canceled by CNET, which happens. And right. we, moved, we moved to the morning. And now we've tried to become the premier technology news podcast. If you listen to us, even just the first part of the show, you'll get – a summary of everything that you need to know about technology news that has happened up to the point that we record that show. And then we have discussion segments after those top 10 stories that try to give you some context, some insight. We have smart guests uh, from mostly reporters who cover the space intently to come up and share insights about why things are the way they are. And we do some emails and, and some uh, voice calls and we have a chat room going and we do a little feedback section at the end of the show. Right. And we, tr we just try to keep people up to date on yeah. tech news and it's i loved doing buzz out loud i love doing tech news today it's the favorite thing that i do because it's i just get into it i wake up at 6 a.m every morning i don't even like get out of bed i just grab my ipad and start looking at my rss feeds right and um, it's just it just takes me back to um i mean just listening to buzz out loud with with you veronica and and um and molly and it was just like oh man this is so awesome you know getting this tech news every day and then just these two, these three folks that were just seemed to me approachable. And then when, and then when Scott created Nerdtacular, you know, for us to go out to there, go out, you know, go to Utah. And I remember the first time going out there and meeting you, Veronica and Eileen. And I was just like, you know, I was kind of. I don't even think I met you. I probably just stayed back because. Oh, so nervous to meet everybody. Right. I was like, oh my god. I feel like I've known you for years, though. Like, <laughs> I, re I remember meeting you. Yeah. Right. Well, was, <laughs> but was it was it at the 2000? Was it the one in the theater? Yeah. Yes. Yep. That's the right. one. That was the first time there. Yeah. The it, it, it wasn't hard to to forget us. It's not like we blended in with the Yeah, crowd. I mean. Well, it was smaller than the, too because it was just, what, a theater full of people. Yeah, right. and plus, it, you know. You, I mean, you still, it's, it's still <laughs> got that community feel, but it's getting bigger now. Like, yeah. there were, like, I barely saw Dills at yeah. this last one. Yeah, same you know, here. Just yeah. to say hi and catch up a little bit. That's why it needs to be three uh, But yeah, that theater one, it was like, we all watched the movie and then we came out in that little room and Scott gave away stuff and it was, that was really fun. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, it was great. And the sit with so. Brian. I was like, oh, that's Brian. Yeah, that's Brian. Oh, 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 my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny that I felt that way. Now it's like, eh. They're that was the friends. first time I met Scott in person. Really? That was amazing. Yeah. Oh, because we oh, and the big joke was we were trying to get, um, was that the same one we were trying to get Molly out to, or was it the, the following one? Molly uh, Wood. It was the one, right? because that one happened right after... Right after I left, because, yeah, they were back in, they were in May then. It was, like, right after I left right. CNET, but before I had started at Twit. Right. And we were, we were all like, we should, let's get Molly out there. And Molly yeah. did the diss on Buzz Out Loud about, <laughs> what's a nerdacular? Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> Maybe she'll come oh, out to the... To ice the Warm remembers. Of often. course Ice Warm remembers. <laughs> you know, Why am I not we, we, I think she usually gets crap for that every... Every, oh yeah, every Ice Worm always brings it up. It's yeah. so funny. It's so, it's so oh, does he? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and you know, it's like I would feel my Buzz Out Loud fanboy, my my inner fanboy would be complete when I meet Molly Wood. You know, because I remember the first time she tweeted me back one, one time really? before, and I was like, <gasps> you know. I would so. love to meet her. There aren't a ton of women in the industry, so it's kind of cool when I get to meet them. Like I would love to meet. Yeah. Alicia yeah. Day. Love to meet her. Yeah. I met Veronica Belmont. She's super nice. <laughs> Renee was nervous about that. Of course, well, I kind of pushed her out there. I was like, about... this is my wife, Renee, Veronica. <laughs> it's fun for us, too. And I like think really that's what's pretty. cool about podcasting is it's it's a two-way street, too. Yeah. Because if you start to get to know somebody on Twitter or through the chat room and you know that handle mm -hmm. and then you go up and, and they introduce themselves and most, most of the time it goes like, hi, I'm Bob. And you're like, oh, hey, Bob, it's you know, nice to meet you. And then they're like, I'm actually like Moo Cow 35. Like, oh my God, you're Moo Cow 35. <laughs> you get really excited because this was. is someone you've been interacting with and talking with. It's the same thing as any kind of celebrity where it's like, I've interacted with you. I know who you are, but we've never met. We never shared the same space before. It's really fun. Yeah. And I try to get people to go up and talk to people that they're scared to talk to. Like 
I'm friends with Scott now, and people don't want to talk to Scott because they're he's nervous. Scary, man. He's yeah, so <laughs> apparently he's a scary, scary dude. But I'm like, just talk to him. He's super nice, and he'll act like you're his best friend. Right. So, and that's what I love about everybody. Everybody's so nice. Yeah. You know, nobody turns turns their nose up to it, at anybody, and it's yeah, great. No, I felt really bad because this one guy, I was on his podcast earlier this year, and he's like, you know, you blew me off at Dragon Con last year. I was like, I what? And apparently, I was in the middle of trying to transfer the Sword and Laser show off my laptop. Oh, wait, off a camera to the laptop. Right. And he came up and looked at me, and I, apparently I looked right at him and then just walked out of the room. <laughs> like, oh, dude, you should have said something. I'm so, like, if he would have said, hey, Tom, I would have totally stopped. Right. I might have even had to be apologetic and say, oh, I'm really in a real hurry. I wish I could talk some more. Right. But he didn't say anything to me. I felt really bad about that. <laughs> like, I, I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know why. I walked right past you. I'm really Aww. sorry. And, and it's funny. It's funny when you say that because my subject to the email to Tom was like, hey, Tom, it's J.J. Valentine, a.k.a. Cowboy. <laughs> so it's like some people only know me as Ice Flow. Well, they don't even know me as Right. Ice. You know, I, I do that to Scott. I still do that to Scott sometimes. You do. When you I send an email, I like, know. I stopped doing it. I'm like, look, y'all should know me by now. All right. Valentine should just set it all off and then you should know. Um, Before Tank Girl was one like that where she came up and introduced yeah. herself. And I'm like, and then she's like, before Tank Girl, I'm like, oh, my God, it's before Tank Girl. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. And 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 also, Tom, you, you, like you said, you do, you guys do come down to Dragon Con, which we're, you know, this will be our third or fourth year there. Oh, cool, and, good. And I'm exci excited about that. And last year, you all had one of my favorite oh my authors gosh. of all time. He talks about this all the time still. Mr. Salvatore. He's great. He, he is in fact, we're setting up an interview for the premiere of Sundering when it comes out. Yeah, I think it actually just came out, but we're doing we're gonna do a uh, we're gonna do another we're gonna do it. It's the third only author we've ever interviewed three times. We're gonna definitely interview him again. Oh, it's, it's just so fun to talk to him. He is, and he's so. I didn't get a chance to a ask my questions at the um at, um, at the panel because I waited too long because I was too too nervous. But uh, then you got cut off. Yeah, but then but after after the panel, he was out there with his wife, and. I actually went up to him, shook his hand, and, and, and talked to him. And he, was, he wasn't he was like, well, you know, get away from me or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm but, Bob Salvatore. Yeah. Be gone. Yeah. And I was just, I mean, that was also the same time because, I mean, I was in Nebraska. I got my, you know, I was reading his books because um, I was riding the bus a lot, you know, back and uh -huh. forth from work. And when I wasn't, wasn't listening to podcasts, I was reading his books from the library and stuff. And it was just, um, oh, Physical man. Physical books. Yep. And then not only right. that. But this year, you you and Veronica are going to be interviewing Jim Butcher. I know, and that's one of Veronica's idols too. Oh, that is, Which we've interviewed him once on the video show, but we've never we've never interviewed him in person. That's going to be fun. Right, right. So that's exciting. And um, for those that don't know, this is the podcast called Sword and Laser that um, Tom and Veronica do together. Love um, it. Um, and it started back in 2010. Is that correct? 2008. 2008. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Because we put it might have been 07. I always forget, but I think it's eight. Yeah. It's we, uh, we started it as a Ning group book club, mm -hmm. and then started doing podcasts a little bit after that. Okay. And um, do you remember your first uh, the first the first four episodes you guys did it was a four parter? Yeah. Was it Ender's Game? Nah. It was a uh, Neuromancer. Oh, it was a Neuromancer. Yeah. Have yeah. I seen? I don't think I've read that. I always forget the order of the early ones because we did American Gods, we did uh, Golden Compass, Neuromancer, mm -hmm. Childhood's End, but I always I can't remember what the order of them. But yeah, we would do it where we would like we'd read part of the book and then we'd do an episode mm -hmm. recapping that part. I still wonder if maybe we shouldn't go back to that sometimes because now it gets to be a little bit where everybody in the chat room reads ahead or no, Goodreads, or mm -hmm. we have a Goodreads for them. They all read ahead. They're done with the book practically by the day we kick it off on the podcast. That would be Renee. And then we, and then we have to give other people a chance to catch up. But Yeah, that would be Renee because <laughs> Renee can read. Well, I'll talk about this more in the media section. Okay. But, yeah, but yeah I, I am the reader. I've been reading since I was little. It's, it's, it, it's ingrained in me. We, we would take five books on vacation. I would read them before we even get there. I'm a oh, huge man. I reader. I wish I could read that fast. Uh, uh, Tom, it is crazy. Jay, she read... Jay like, will look at me in awe, and it makes me feel like a freak the okay. way he looks at me when I'm reading. Like, this past... Okay, so we went on vacation. Um, she finished reading the book. 
like on um it was a Saturday. Saturday night she starts um um Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. The fir- the first the first one. Sure. She finishes before our show on Monday. I mean, it was but th- but that <laughs> part is short. There there's some that is shorter and easier read, you're right. Yeah, it's <laughs> now it's I feel dumb. Breaks it fast. No. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I'm a slow reader. No, 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 no. It's you too, man. I've always read a little fast, and I I didn't think I was different until Jay until until we started reading a book together. Like she was reading and, two and other books while I was, she was waiting for me to catch yeah, up. I was like, okay, I've been done with this chapter for a while. I'll just start reading this and other book while I read a lot. It's not like I don't spend a lot of time reading. I just I read really slowly. Yeah, it's like I read it. It's like I read every word, and I go back and read and make sure I understand. And it's kind of like, and then especially if they're trying to describe a whole lot, I, I get absorbed into that. You gotta learn. There's something you, you don't need to. Yeah, she's take good at every single word and absorb every single word. Yeah, she's good guess at guess what? You know, you, your brain will do that for you. Right. You gotta let your brain do the work. Mm. Okay, I sound like I sound really weird just talking about. I'm gonna go reading. to Renee's speed reading classes. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, she, she needs to do, a speed. do the work. Gotcha. Anyway, let's let's talk about some tech, Jay. Let's All right, do it. Let's get to it. Tech, 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 technology. All right, so this is part of the tech. You know that voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I want to talk about. This has been my favorite subject, and I'm so close. I want I want to talk about cord cutting. I know you and Nicole talked about it a little bit on the last frame rate. Yep. And it and it really has me, you know, right on the cusp. I want to do it so bad. But there And what's frame rate? Frame rate is a wonderful show where they, where where I don't know, talk about media and I'm I'm where, where bad. they talk about cord, cutting the code. I'm um, cutting the cord. Cutting the cord. Yeah. That was yes. And about I'm, streaming media. It's about streaming media and I really want to cut the cord. So, um we have now it's uh, Time Warner. Time Warner. Insight was it changed bought, to, was from bought Insight by Time to Warner. Dumb, do you guys Warner. have CBS right now? Or you, yes. We do. We do we have CBS. Not You're I, not one of the black I, markets. I heard you all talk about that. I was like, oh, well, blackout. Well, the reason being is because I think Insight, um, because Insight already made their deals with our local stations. Yeah. So your station isn't owned and operated yeah. by CBS. But we were involved in a blackout, was it last year? Mm-hmm. Oh, Fox. yeah, with Fox. Fox was gone for like, what, th- Three weeks. It was three weeks. No Fox. It was horrible. And so that was a little. It was like we're missing um, so new girl. New girl. <laughs> oh right. Yeah, there was a Direct TV blackout of one of the channels. I think it might have been Fox. We AMC. A, it was AMC. It was AMC. Oh, right. Was it, AMC? it was AMC no, last not, year. Direct AMC was with Dish. Oh, that was Dish. So. Oh yeah, okay. I can't remember what the Direct TV one. It actually didn't last that long. Oh okay. Yeah. Blackouts it was only are a couple horrible. Days, but we didn't even it, we didn't even run See, into it. That like makes me want to cut the cord, so I don't have that. You, yeah. you know, I don't just, just get it jerked right out of my arm, the little heroin needle just jerked out. You know, I get to come down slowly. Right. So um, I, we have HBO that, that keeps us from cutting the cord because as soon as they allow us to subscribe without getting the whole package, I'm so there. Right. Um, and then my silly shows. I, <laughs> I call them silly shows. Like Project Runway, America's Next Top mm-hmm. Model, you know, the kind of shows. I feel like I, I could let them go, but I had to make the decision to chop it off. Can up. you buy those on iTunes or Vudu? I or? wouldn't want to buy those. So, <laughs> well, but see, if you don't pay yeah. for cable, yeah. then you can either you can rent some of them, too. Yeah, that's true. So um, I just recently started listening to Frame Rate because I've made a vow to try to listen to the podcast that I've wanted to listen to and be okay Thanks. getting behind in, in other podcasts. So I, I started listening to Frame Rate, and I actually started right the show that Brian cut the cord from, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, from Time Warner Cable. And I guess one of the things, and we do a podcast also with a couple of other guys, um, Gaming After, um, Grumpy Old Men After Dark, and one of the guys has cut has cut the cord for I think three years, and. For, when you cut the cord and then you rent the movies, I mean, what's the, I guess, what's the monetary difference? Is it huge? Is it not? I mean, I, I just. Well, how much? How much is your cable bill now? Right now, it's 180. That's including. That's with two two um, DVRs. Um, in, well, that also includes our um, um, 30 meg um, internet as well. So. All right. Oh, okay. So how how much would it be? That that makes more sense. 
How much oh, would it be like, if, you broke, if you just did internet? Probably like that's about sixty alone. That I'm guessing. Right. Uh, yeah. It's like it's either between sixty or eighty. So you could probably get. I mean, they're gonna say that you could probably get a deal on the internet to keep that around fifty. Let's say mm, fifty okay. or sixty. Mm -hmm. um, so you got one hundred twenty dollars a month of savings. The shows that you rent are usually about a buck. Uh, the shows that to buy in high def are usually about $3. Mm -hmm. So if you average it about $2, that's 60 episodes you could buy a month, okay. roughly speaking. Yeah, and I don't even need to buy an episode. Just rent it is fine. Right. I think I'll be Yeah, okay. most of the time, right? Unless it's something the only, good like Breaking Bad. There are some bad. shows that aren't available for rent, mm -hmm. and then you just got to decide, well... Do I want to just plunk it down and buy them? That's why I buy my shows on Vudu now, because that way I, it doesn't clutter up my hard drive. Mm -hmm. If I if I have to buy a show, I do that. Be like, and they keep it in the cloud, and you can access it from multiple services. That's can, great. Because they're part of the ultraviolet thing. So you can get it from Flickster. There's a couple other minor places you can get it to from. But I, I feel like that's a better way to do that. Now, you, so you've cut, you, have you cut the cord? No, we haven't. Okay. And, Honestly, if it was just me, I'd probably do it. HBO is the big blocker, right? right? But I would find ways somehow, <laughs> uh, I would imagine, to, right. to live with that. Right, but, right. But, yeah, the, uh, the over-the-air stuff, we've got over-the-air antennas. I've got a simple TV. Uh, it's just convincing Eileen, my wife, mm -hmm. that to, to let go and not be able to always get everything you want. And she, you know, and she's that's um, on the on the frivolous side, right? The things right. you really care about, yeah, we got to find ways to make sure we watch the shows that we really love. And she's like, well, sometimes we just like to have HGTV on, right, and just watch House Hunters for an evening, right? And we wouldn't yeah. be able to do that. I'm like, okay, yeah, that's true. So we just have to adapt. We'd have to learn to live with. Turn that. on YouTube and just watch. We just have <laughs> yeah, right. YouTube on exactly. TV. Well, you we got, got the Chromecast. Oh, isn't it awesome? Thirty-five bucks. Plug yep. it in the HDMI. She was messing with YouTube and watching on the Chromecast and she put on Twitter, she's like, I'm so close to cutting the cord right now. I bet you were like, and yes, we're almost there. Isn't the, cool, cool, cool. Chromecast was one of the, aside from the iPhone 5 and the iPhone 4, Chromecast was one of my day one purchases. It was like oh, yeah. five minutes, because I was watching you all um, at um, Tech News Today where, on, on Twitter where you guys were doing the live stream Yeah. Um, on, on the Google oh. <laughs> Oh, I didn't turn my phone off. Good job. Oh, noob. tiny Tina. Oh, <laughs> I didn't turn my phone off. Um, and you then it, <laughs> it was um, it was five minutes after um, the announcement when someone in your chat room gave the link. They I guess they were they kept digging. They found the link and yeah. they gave it. And I just went boom. I bought it. I mean, it was I like too. twelve was bucks. Working, and I still I was like I'm getting two of these right now. And um, it is an amazing device. It is one. It is the best. YouTube streaming device out of out of my Roku and my um, um, Apple TV that I have because the we have too many devices. The high definition on it is amazing. We have way too many devices <laughs> when you think about it. We have two DVRs, one in the front, one in the back, two Roku's. Um, we have two Apple TVs. The two Apple TVs. Two Apple TVs, a DVD player in the front and the back. We have Blu-ray player. Yeah, yep. Blu-ray player. Yeah, so. I tell Jay every time he brings it, another device, I'm like, babe, another one to be real. And, and then I built a media and then he's PC. Like, also. Yes, he built a media PC. <laughs> so yeah, I always, I always justify it like, well, but I'm hosting the show frame rate, so I, I've got to get this stuff well, and try it out. See, I know, and you it, can say that for our. Yeah, I have used that a couple tech. of times. Yeah. I, I have used it a couple of times. I gotta talk about <laughs> it so somebody else can know what it's like. No, I don't want to come off uninformed. You know, I just think, I think for myself, I just need a reliable source for those tv shows you can't get when it's well you can't get the season while it's going mainly hbo <laughs> yeah hbo is the one and they will not bring it directly to you over the internet until the economy shifts enough that cable can't afford to give them free marketing anymore right i mean they they're they i honestly believe that hbo is sitting there ready to, to pull the trigger they're just waiting for the timing to be right as soon as what a lot of people don't realize is that HBO gets free advertising from every cable company. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you see those ads for HBO on other non-HBO channels, those are from the cable company, wow. gratis. As they soon, just throw uh, them in. As soon as that happens, I'm watching all the shows on my DVR, and I'm cutting the cord as soon as they do that. 
Yeah. yeah. No, me too. And they're doing it in uh, Scandinavia somewhere. I can't remember the, which countries, but they're they're providing a, a direct to consumer version in a place where they don't didn't already have a big footprint. Mm -hmm. uh, so they 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 weren't jeopardizing relationships there. And right. They're always going at the Jeff Books, the head of Time Warner that owns not Time Warner Cable, but Time Warner that owns HBO, is always going around like, yeah, sure, you know, Game of Thrones gets pirated a lot. It's the best marketing we have. Right. And I'm like, <laughs> you're watching that. He's watching that. He's like, when when that marketing gets more valuable than the free marketing, as people cut the cord and there's fewer cable subscriptions, right? We're just gonna go straight straight to people. Yeah, and, and that's my guess. And then you yep. have and then you have Orange is the New Black and. House oh of my cards. gosh, oranges! Don't even get me started. I feel like I'm getting paid by them because I talk about this yeah. so much. I tell everyone, you must watch the Orange is the New Black. Just, just watch it. Yes, there are boobs within the first minute, but still, just, just, just don't pay attention to that. Just watch it. Right. And uh, we actually have a question from Punk Gopher: Roku, Apple TV, Chromecast. Which is the best single device? If you could only afford one, which one would it, you get? It, it, there, that or there's not one answer for everyone yet. Yeah, there is on on that question. Roku is probably the widest applicable, but it doesn't have YouTube. Right. And it doesn't have s screencasting. Yep. Uh, Chromecast is great if you already have like an iOS device or a laptop because then you can take pretty much anything off of your laptop or your phone. Actually, Android phones work too. What am I saying? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be an iOS device. <laughs> but uh, if, you've got, if you've got a phone or a laptop, and that's the cheapest and you can you can cast pretty much everything and netflix is native and they're going to get more apps that's probably the top one right now apple tv is better for people who live in the apple universe right. if you've got an ios phone and you've got an os 10 laptop you can also cast anything there and it's really great for podcasting and they have a youtube channel so it just all depends on who you are right and one day there's going to be that one magic device that's going to combine I'm waiting everything for that day. i can't wait for that day. Uh, w but wouldn't that be the um, a media PC <laughs> that we already? Well, yeah, have. except that's too complicated for a lot. It of is. It it is complicated. It, I'll admit that. It's, and it's on the more expensive side. Yeah. Than everything yeah. else. Because I, I I think for mine when I built, I think I was able to get it under four hundred bucks, and that was. Yeah, that's, that's on the it's side. it's still a a um, DIY kind of situation. Yeah. It may not be a total maker situation. Right. But you have to know like wh how to find a good cheap computer mm -hmm. ha with, that has media center on it how to hook up the tuner or right. you know takes a little effort totally oh, yeah. worth it or you could put a myth myth make it into a myth tv or sage box or xbmc probably is the best these days frankly right i actually but if I'm, you're like those words mean nothing to me then that doesn't help right you. i'm actually i'm kind of wary of xbmc i, I kind of stayed away from that and i went with the uh, windows media center you know yeah I, you can do both yeah i know <laughs> I just haven't had time to mess around with it like That's I wanted to. That's the thing, right? It's yeah. like you need that time to mess around, whereas with a Roku or Apple TV, you yep. just plug it in and it works. Exactly. So. Because That's probably a better solution for most people. That's, so. That's one of the reasons why I don't have an Android phone, because I don't feel like I have to tinker with it all the time. Yeah. You know, we don't I, have time just, for that. We have stuff to watch. Yeah, because working in tech all day, you kind of like, I, I just want to go home and veg. Um, it's like when I worked at Pizza Hut, and I didn't <laughs> want to eat pizza. <laughs> Oh, well, that doesn't apply to me. I work at Taco Bell. I still love Taco Bell. I can eat Taco Bell every yeah. day of my life. I love Taco Bell. <laughs> so good. So I have to ask, um, you know, like, like I told you before the show, I went back and listened to the last episode of um, Buzz Out Loud, which you all did 1,588 shows. Oh, uh, well, you were there for a majority of that. Um, yeah, I think it was 1,200. Oh, yeah, a huge amount that you were there for. Oh, yeah. um, but um, what you were asked during the are you into it part oh yeah i don't know if you remember this you were asked no uh, weren't you weren't into the new google hud glass because it wasn't real now i have to ask <laughs> hold on real real like ex actually exists uh, yeah like, actually going to because yeah, tom's word i'm not into it because it's not real so what did you mean by not real? Was it? It's like not it, going. There was was not around. It I wasn't around. Try okay. one. I, there would, It didn't exist. And and, and I, I can get with that because you know how I am about World of Warcraft when they talk about this is what we're going to do in the future patches and I'm like I'm not getting excited about the changes until they're on yeah. my bar. Yeah. So now Burned that the, by the new dances, right? Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so now that the Google Glass is real, are you into it? Yeah, you know, and I actually got to try one. Uh, thankfully, Will Smith, uh, the guy from Tested, 
uh, was at Comic Con and he let me try his on. It's cool. I want to be into it, mm-hmm. but it's not ready yet. Right. And it's definitely an early adopters mess around thing, but it's it's a tiny little screen that hovers. Oh, yeah. You know, it's not virtual reality. It's a tiny little screen that hovers in front of your eye, mm-hmm. and you get, the menu's a little janky. There's not as many things as you could do with it that that maybe you would like it to do, but it will get there. Right. Like it definitely has the platform to do that. So in about and, 50 And so years. I'm not worried about having to put something on my face and look geeky or anything like that. Right. But, okay, so let's do a little bit of forecasting type thing. Do you see it as common in the next 100 to 150 years or so? Do you see no, it being common? No, I don't. I think it'll probably be more popular than Linux is right now. <laughs> okay. But less popular than smartphones. Okay. Right. So, Somewhere, I mean, so smartphones are almost a, ubiquitous it's such now. It's a cool so. idea. I, you know? oh I think it'll be, yeah. I, I think it'll be a big niche device. I think a lot of people have it, but some people are like, yeah, I don't need that. It, there, there's, it's not. Oh my gosh, it's a smartphone. I have to have it. Right, right. Um, and then one of the cool things that we were driving, we were driving um, to go do a show with one of our friends yesterday, which I don't even know why I had to say that. I don't know which, why. Well, I guess you can plug well, Ashley. You can plug Ashley's show yeah, if you uh, like. At, she actually eats deliciously Louisville at Louisville.am, so go check it out. It was an episode from yesterday. But anyway, <laughs> we were driving um, to the studio, and we got behind a truck that had a QR, a, a big truck, had this big old QR code on the back. And, this, and I was sitting there thinking, who's going to grab their phone and hold it up and take a picture of this QR code and, you know, while they're driving and see what that is going to take them to? And I said, that would be an awesome application for Google Glass. Sure. You know, I, I think that would, I guess, but. I guess, That's telling right there, though. Like right. One of the, the best applications you can think of is the many people who will need to scan a QR code <laughs> off the back of a moving truck in front of them. And that leads to the next question that Renee had. Yeah, I do. And I was going to talk about it, but because, all right. Who really uses QR codes on a daily basis besides Animal Crossing? I know we use those <laughs> sure. for Animal Crossing. Cut that out of your, right, your right. thinking. Well, you I use mean, 3DS for that anyway. Yeah. Do Do you know anybody who uses them on a daily basis? I I, I do. Okay. Uh, they're all pretty much in Silicon Valley, oh. where it's where it's kind of a thing. Okay, so it's a and thing. It becomes okay. common. It becomes more common. Well, but I did kind when of. When I see QR codes mm-hmm. in the wild, I rarely see anyone scanning them. Now, I did scan the one at um, Panera so that I can get their hidden menu. Mm-hmm. Because, but that's because you knew you were going to get something yeah, cause free I did, yeah. or, or, or well, something. No, I didn't get anything Not free. Not free, but you are going to get, you right. know, you were getting something out of it. It wasn't just for, hey, I just want some basic info. Right. Like, hey, I wonder, you know, where that story is or what their hours are or what their code of creed is. It's, I don't know. I'm... I thought it was kind of janky when it first came out because I was like, hey, no one's going to scan that. But apparently they use them because they're still around. Yeah. And I just see them as like big plaster on billboards. I just think it looks kind of janky. Well, it's because everybody has smartphones. And so when the guy that wants to do the QR code goes into his boss and says, I got this great pitch. We're going to put these codes up. And then people with their smartphones, you know, all the kids have smartphones. <laughs> and they're going to scan it. And it sounds impressive. And right. so they, they green light it. But I bet the usage is very low. Oh, yeah. It's a patch, right? Yeah. Eventually, we're going to have augmented reality where we just look at something and it says, that's Panera. You know, <laughs> link twice for the hidden menu. Right. You need a QR code. Right. right. So my last question um, within tech here, in your entire career as a technology journalist, what is the one item or innovation that has stood out for you and to you has changed the face of technology? Well, the internet. The, uh, Why didn't you say besides the, the internet, Jay? Right? You I say had, besides the internet. I gave internet. you these notes, lady. Well, well, I didn't think that <laughs> I would have to read. I didn't think I would have to look at them like that. Okay. <clears throat> besides the internet. Or see, the iPhone. I finished up the no, that's question. fair. That's totally fair. <laughs> um, well, you know what? I'll leave the iPhone out there just in case. I honestly think it's probably the smartphone yeah. right now. Because, I like how you said the smartphone and not just the iPhone. Yeah, uh, and that, yeah, that's valid. yeah. Well, and the iPhone definitely started the the push, right? But the idea that I can have this computer mm-hmm. in my hand with an internet connection anywhere I go. If you had told 1997 me that that was possible, I would have like ex- my head would have exploded. 
you know, I remember going on vacation even in like 2001 mm -hmm. uh, and uh, 2000 and having to find an internet cafe to go check my Yahoo mail, right? <laughs> yeah. I remember Yahoo. You, d you did not have Wi-Fi anywhere. Right. You rarely even had internet at hotels with Ethernet. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we now are like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sitting at, at dinner and I'm like, what what hey Becca, what's the name of that that HDMI to, to display port converter again? I'm gonna buy that on Amazon right now. Right. Or, you know, I can check some mail and get some work done while I'm waiting in the dentist office and approve some blog posts and, and write some stuff. Like it's just it's crazy. It's so or, great. or I'm sitting at Target and I'm looking at this um this item and I'm like, let's see what the price of that is on Amazon. Oh yeah. You go check real quick. Oh, oh I just ordered it right Amazon. there and ordered. walk right out of Target and uh, buy these things. I, um, <laughs> so Amazon has been amazing. Their transformation has been amazing. They were books, yeah, books, bookstore. and that's it. World's just, biggest bookstore. Just books, and yep. then they became this thing where you can buy Chi Chi's corn cake mix <laughs> and deliver it right to my door. If you've never had Chi Chi's corn cake mix, it is amazing. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> what did I buy? Um. Jaffa cakes. Oh, oh we on Amazon. Had some of those. Yeah, we, we got them sent to us. Yeah, we actually, have actually yeah. from somebody in Australia. Yep. Sent us some, and those are freaking amazing. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you can buy them on. You can buy them on Amazon. You can buy anything. On, Amazon has become my search engine for prices too. Yes. Like how about how much does that cost? Not when I'm shopping for the best price necessarily, but right. when I'm like, I just want to know like what's the retail price, what's the list price on something. I always go to Amazon. Right. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, with that, let's go ahead and jump right into some. See, I need to take some Tom Segway classes. You do Tom Segway Segway class. That would be good for the next you know spectacular. Have a mini Segway class. Yeah, we class. we need to, you need to do that at the <laughs> podcast <laughs> track at a panel. A or panel something. on because you are the king of Segway. You are the Segway master, man. So. But you say that it makes me think of the Segway that. Well, that's that you because ride. you were on the marketing. I was. I actually did marketing, like real world marketing, when I was in college. Before it came uh -huh. out. Yeah, when the Segway first came out, I actually helped them do uh, focus groups and <laughs> market research. That's yeah. Awesome. Well, Little known fact about me. All right. Media. Movies, books, comics, TV. Too long. It's not too long. Every time I hear it, it's too long. <laughs> it is not. Tell me, tell him that's a like, sketch too long. It's like the mm, sausage with Veronica that's that place. It's like, <laughs> you think it's going to end? That's just disturbing. End? Yeah. Uh, mm. Maybe two exits, see how it plays. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, a two exits. I, 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 I am up to your level now, Tom, on, on podcasting listening speed. I am 3Xing okay. I I am am now. I And it's so funny, especially with video. I watched Frame Rate on 3X. <laughs> it is the oh most hilarious God. thing I've ever Around, seen. Like crazy people? Yes, it's great. Yep, I got so, my, I was watching, I was watching on video today and I got my LTE warning that says I was about to go over five megs oh, on my ha. LTE. And then and then you just laugh because you're grandfathered in. Yeah. So <laughs> so I'm going to talk about something that I haven't seen yet, which is totally unprofessional. But uh, <laughs> have you seen the new Jobs trailer? I've seen the trailer, yeah. You've seen the trailer. I haven't seen I was going to watch it before this, but I got distracted by a fashion web blog. But um, <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> is it good? And I'm going to watch it right after this, but... Um, I remember you saying that you were, it was Ashton Kutcher, Ashton Kutcher in, this was 2012. 2012. And you were like, eh, that sounds just kind of wonky. How do you it, feel about it? I was worried at the time that it was going to be like Pirates of Silicon Valley, which <laughs> classic, but sometimes for all the wrong reasons. Right. With Anthony Michael Hall is Bill Gates, right? <laughs> um, but I have to say, Ashton Kutcher seems in the trailer anyway to be pretty jobs-like. Hmm. It doesn't seem to me that any of the other people that are in there are very job. They have Kotke, they have Wozniak, of course, it's, it's and Jack, they have Black uh, John Scully oh, like in the trailer. Type and none of they all look like no, that is not that is not how they, those. They don't look like nerds, or they don't look like you know geeks or anything. They just look like Hollywood. Uh, well, types. they look like bad, like somebody dressed up cosplay oh I, I forgot cosplay daniel kotke and cosplay steve wozniak That's and horrible. they I'm, didn't quite fit the parallel but they have all the right things on right. so <laughs> um yeah it's just there's something off about it but at the same time i it made me want to go see it it made me That's interested good. enough to say okay they seem to be hitting on all the right storylines right 
that I'm interested in when I think about Steve Jobs' life. So, I think the funniest part of that was when um, I can't remember the two guys, but one of them said they want Jack Black to be Wozniak. That would be great. And then um, they wanted Keanu Reeves to play the early Steve Jobs. The, no, the older. The older Steve Jobs. <laughs> Jobs. That, that was from that, that was from the last Buzz Out Loud as well. I, I can't remember who said that. I can't that. remember who said it, but that it was, was funny. I, I I died laughing. Keanu Reeves. Right. So yeah, I'll be watching that. I mean, Whoa. yeah, I give it. A <laughs> <laughs> I know C plus plus. That would be great. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I go see it. Um, I'm not a big Apple person. Um, my first uh, introduction to Apple, I'm I wasn't a really nerd or geek or anything until I got older, but I had an iMac. You know, the pretty ones. Right. I had a blue one. Uh, and I took it back. I'll tell you why. Within the first week. You know why? Because I couldn't play the games I wanted to play <laughs> on it. This is when they didn't have a lot of games. Yeah. For and I was like, why do I have this? It's like, I want to play games. So right, right. I got a gateway, which was a wreck. But <laughs> I was able to play games on it. <laughs> right. So, and I mean, I love my iPhone, but I don't want, okay. I know people love this. I can't do the one button mouse. It it burns me up inside. I'm like I want to I don't want I don't want to use the control. I want to have it all on one hand. So I don't know. It burns me up. I don't know why. Uh but anyway, that's so off topic. Um I want to talk about our guilty pleasures. I have guilty pleasures in TV. Mm-hmm. This is mainly t- TV because, you know, games is fine, but TV, my guilty pleasure, it's I have several that I call the tv that i probably could live without i love my america's next top model this is the worst show on tv i yeah. will admit this is horrible it's been going for 19 seasons and it's it's campy it's stupid but i can't stop watching it and i don't know why and they they always find a they always find a gimmick to the make gimmick you is always it. stupid so now it's boys versus girls so now they put a whole bunch of hot girls and a whole bunch of hot guys in a house what do you think is going to happen so Real that's my world. just a lot of pinochle and <laughs> salad making shuffleboard salad making <laughs> shuffleboard <It's good. laughs> so that's my guilty pleasure what's your guilty pleasure jay i want to know what you think your guilty pleasure is my guilty pleasure in, in tv you can do games if you want well, to no, well. my guilty pleasure in tv are the um like the shows like the auction shows like storage wars oh. and um the Kentucky, oh, which the one that didn't? The Kentucky Bitters. Yeah, the, the Kentucky Bitters, stuff like that. That's that's my. And then also, um, it used to be um, Pawn Stars, and they kind of, I don't know. I think they kind of went. They main, got formulated. They got very formulated. So th- those were my um, guilty pleasures. Everybody has some that they, you know, like I shouldn't like this, but I do. Tom, what is your guilty pleasure? See, I, I want to sound all highfalutin and say, like, oh, Top Chef Masters. <laughs> but, but that's not even that bad of a show, right? right. Like, right that's actually not. respected by chefs. Mm-hmm. You've got Michelin star chefs competing in it. So I, I feel like probably the worst thing that I enjoy watching on TV is Love It or List It on HGTV. Oh, oh we, yeah. We've a actually stupid seen stupid-ass show. But <laughs> when we stupid. were all stressed right. out moving, <laughs> right. that and House Hunters – would be we would just turn it on and just and yeah, I mentioned it I alluded to it earlier we would just turn it on and turn our brains off yes because it has just enough plot yep. in every storyline every those realities to keep you interested but you don't have to think hard about it right and it's like and then you're like hmm are you gonna take the first half second or half third half and you yeah, and, exactly. and you're debating between the commercial break like, like I'm actually talking to Jay what do you think they're gonna do I don't know what do you think you're oh gonna yeah do? we <laughs> do the same thing we totally <laughs> and when, so that's why I say love it or list it because House Hunters at least has three things <laughs> love it or list it it's like all predetermined you right. know this right. there's only two choices stay in your own house or move to a new house <laughs> right, right so it's it's like the dead simplest of the hgtv shows it's so funny yeah, yeah. It, i think it's good to turn our minds off sometimes all our tv doesn't have to be you know high you know highly intelligent right. that makes you think all the time yeah it, so. and it's and it's H, house hunters is like jersey shore and it's like the reason I say that is that because when you're watching it and if they're doing like back to back to back to back, it's like, okay, this is my last one. And oh, then yeah. They say, okay. okay, um, they chose the third house. And then See, it goes Jersey to- Shore makes me hurt. Aww, <laughs> so, like the Hills, nice. Jersey Shore, Laguna Beach, all those shows. When Eileen would watch them, she actually never really watched Jersey Shore. I think she just tried it one time. Right. 
but the hills and laguna beach uh, the oc all of those shows i would just i'd watch a little i'm like i can't i can't be in the room with this right now. jersey shore just, i was like all the people on tv i was like they're all cartoon characters which made me be able to watch it i'm like they're not even real there's no way people are real maybe so, that would have got me through i feel like i was I watching a cartoon wish i'd had that advice so. <laughs> right right and, and and the way that they cut the commercial is like they they start playing the first episode you know before the half an hour mark to keep you to that stay to keep yeah, you there they like <laughs> hook you it's, it's like, like oh i can't go it's almost like judge judy i freaking love judge judy <laughs> yeah judge i should have said her i judge love judy is a i will pleasure. i will drop all shows for judge judy all right <laughs> uh so we watched breaking bad have you watched the f- new episode of breaking bad yet i'm I not have. gonna spoil yes. anything sorry hey no spoilers but were you happy with it happy in the direction I, they're going i was oh. i was happy i wasn't sure it was gonna be part way through i felt like maybe it was just moving me. a little slow <laughs> it wasn't just me okay the end it really picked up it and really then at the up. end i was like oh no this is not moving slow at all <laughs> yeah it's all leading to they're, they're just it's going to be a flat out sprint now and for these last seven episodes did you did you also watch the Talking Bad that was after their new show? Talking no, Bad. No, I feel bad, Chris Hardwick. I'm sorry, but no. No, I'm, yeah. I'm, so, so it was so cute because it had uh, Chris Hardwick, of course. It had uh, Julie Bowen, the mom from Modern Family. Huge yeah. fan. She is such a huge Breaking Bad fan. It was hilarious. She was like all over uh, Vince G- Gillian. G- G- Gillian. Vince Gilligan, really? Yep. He was like. And she was like all up in his face saying, I think you should do this. And it was, at one point she said, fan. and at one point she said like, I will come work for you. Get rid of Skylar and I'll come work for you. Like, you could tell it, it was almost like she was pumped up because she was, I was like, she is the hugest Breaking Bad fan. And it was funny just seeing her like go nuts over Breaking Bad. Zilly's like, we already wrapped shooting. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> like, right. hey, we're already done. And she was like, st- like she would stare at him trying to figure out what he meant by every word. It was, oh, that's so it, funny. Was, it was a little creepy because the way she would just. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was kind of creepy. Eyes too. Oh, she does have crazy eyes. She does. She has so, those mom eyes. It was like, so yeah. funny. So if you get a chance to watch a little bit of it, it's. All right. Yeah. Funny. I'll try to go take a look. So, uh, so yeah, they're going to have those every show. Um, I don't know. Yeah, they did that with um, Walking Dead. Walking Dead. Yeah, yep. After actually, Walking Dead, they, they, it was. It ended up being pretty good. Yeah, they actually expanded it from half an hour to an hour. It, it was so popular. So. Yeah. Um, we uh, also watched the Talking Dead. Um, so, and I want to talk about some books I'm reading because I go in stages with my media. I have a problem, Tom. I love games, books, TV, and movies, and you can't do everything. You can't. I have the same problem. So I go in stages where I play a ton of games. And then my reading kind of slacks off, or I watch a ton of TV. And so right now I'm getting back into my reading kick, and I just finished part one of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And I started reading it, and I loved it immediately. I loved the movie, because see, and the and the best part about me watching the movie is that I see most deaf is for is for it, which which I love because I love most deaf. So it's like it's great, and I see freaking Bilbo as uh-huh. <laughs> as a uh, as a freaking uh, Arthur, and uh-huh. I really love it because do, do you know what, what it reminded me of when I started reading it? What? Discworld series. Oh the yeah, way, I've heard that comparison. Before. Yeah, it's That's just good. stuff happens out of nowhere, and it's so great. And and I love how the the narrator kind of comes in and just says things. And um, I blew through it. I'm now on into the second part of the book, and. I'm really lo- loving it, and this is one of my things that should get my geek cred taken away that I've never read it before, but um, I'm really enjoying it, and I should have read it a long time ago. I don't know why I didn't. I th- think because, I don't know why, I was reading a ton of other stuff. reading a ton of other stuff. That's my problem. You're doing so, your fantasy. You're uh, doing a fantasy kick. So, yeah, so um, I haven't watched Sword and Laser recently because I think, um, I remember I got into it, and then I got into my gaming kick, and mm-hmm. I fell off of the Sword and Laser uh, but what you don't it? have to be reading to right. take part in Sword and Laser. Yeah, well, but. see, that's my problem. I I'm a, I can't hear about anything that I haven't seen or read yet. Because she doesn't want to be spoiled. I have a problem. It's, yeah, but we, so. we, we section off any spoilers. We, like, let you know. But I don't want to know well anything. Most I don't, of the shows are not spoilery. I don't want to know the, the, the person's name. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's uh, my problem. I'm author's it. name? I know. No, well, no, no. The no, character. The, like, the character. I, this is... This is my own personal problem. Yeah, this is Renee's thing. I know this. But I'm just saying, we have a whole section on news 
and, see the news. And things where they're just feedback on general like thoughts about reading. Yeah, okay. Before we get to the part that might actually say the name of it. And then you then, can stop that. But then but the her then thing I is. Can't but then she I can't, can't leave a podcast half finished because it's not finished, and See, the, and the right, circle and downcast the is circle halfway. will stay there. It'll the say will be partially half. unplayed. I'm like <laughs> partially, and then I have to go read the book, and it's it's a vicious cycle. I can't do it. So, what uh, book are you all focusing on? Is it Sword or Laser right now? It's Sword right now. Curse of Chalion by Lois McMaster Bujold is the book, and it is fun to read. I'm really Sword. enjoying this. Uh, we got to meet her at Baycon in San Jose mm -hmm. in May because she was the guest of honor and Veronica got to interview her. And then we had her on an episode of Sword and Laser as well. So she's a really nice person and her book sounded fascinating. And now that we're actually reading one, I want to go meet her again because I'm like, oh my God, now I have so many questions to ask you about Curse of Chalion. Huh. That's awesome. And I have to admit, don't feel bad, but Sword is my favorite. I have a special place in my heart for fantasy. Um, okay. Even though so, I love laser. None but, of those can be perfect. Uh, yeah. So... Right. <laughs> so I'm, you know i'm reading two fantasy i'm reading two swords right now because i'm reading curse of chalion and then i'm also reading uh saladin ahmed throne of the crescent moon okay which is a fantasy but instead of fantasy set in a medieval world based on medieval europe it's a fantasy set in a medieval world based on medieval uh, islam mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so there's a caliph uh and it's a, it's an alternate world right it's all made up but it's all with that kind of Islamic background, that Middle Eastern feel and culture huh. informing all of the metaphors. Really cool book. Have you ever read a book that's both sword and laser and you can't put it in one of the other categories? Yeah, we try, we try to do that. We actually try to find those from time to time. Cloud Atlas was one like that. Mm -hmm. We weren't sure if it really was. It wasn't. There were definitely sci-fi stories in mm -hmm. Cloud Atlas, but there was also a fantasy element to it because of the ties through everything. We've had, we've had a few books like that where yeah. we feel like, yeah, this is definitely a sword and laser. That was another reason we picked Lois McMaster Bujold, because if you get really into her writing, she her most popular series is science fiction, right. Captain Vorkosigan's saga. But she also writes fantasy. See, I love the people that can go both worlds. So yeah. I do, oh, sorry. Oh, oh, I'm no, sorry. I just no, said we had a question from the chat room. Okay. Well, yeah, I was going to talk about this. So oh. go. Um, so Diddy um, from the chat room asked, "Are you guys excited for the Ender Game movie? It's one of his, um, you know, it's one of his favorite um, series." I'm more scared than ex I'm scared that they're gonna mess it all up. Yeah, you get I'm one shot too. at Ender's Game. You yeah. get one shot. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, you know, I kind of hope that they do do well uh, like hunger games did well there were some well enough there were some things about yeah. hunger games that were left I'll out you kind of like eh, yeah you know okay but with ender game I, i'm a little worried myself because that is one of the books that once i finished reading i actually it messed me up for like a week i couldn't read anything else because i was just like you kept going back and thinking i about just it. kept going back and thinking about it yeah and and i I just hope I, I worry that the movie won't do that. <laughs> do you so so Tom, do you think that they're gonna do the ending justice? Or do you think that they're gonna do it? That's why I'm worried. I mean Harrison Ford usually doesn't make a bad movie. Right. Usually. So it should be so, that's a good sign, right? Well, but he has made mm. bad movies. Okay, I'll just say how many like they made the kids older. <laughs> Yeah, the kids are older, and I, and I guess they did that for, you know, because people couldn't handle it. Yeah, I know. Well, well they kind of did that with Hunger Games. Yeah, the, yeah, they It makes yeah, me wonder what Games. other things they've changed. Yes. Yeah, and, yeah, and Hunger wonder. Games, they made them older, but they didn't, it didn't strike me so much right. when I saw it. I was right. like, I, I, I could believe that's Katniss. Sure, why not? But in, in Ender's Game, I'm like, that is definitely not what, uh, what I pictured Ender, right? Because right. he's supposed to be six. Right. Right, yeah. and I know that's maybe not practical to get a six-year-old to play Ender. I'm, I get that, right. but yeah, but it, but it would have been so cool. Um, but yeah, get somebody like like Webster, you know. That was Gary yeah. Coleman. There are there are tons of oh, what's his name? Ten-year-olds that look six. So let's yeah. you know, you could so do it that way. Right. Yeah, but yeah, so do it right, and 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 they won't have any problems. Do it wrong, and I'll be on their doorstep with the shiv. Right. So, I'm hoping. I'm hoping it's <laughs> yes. doorstep of the shiv. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's been the one? Um, what's been your favorite? Um, 
book that you've read? Um, that's, that's a with, broad with, question. As far as um, Sword and Laser. Okay. That's, that's oh, yeah. Most that I wouldn't have read otherwise. Definitely Scott Lynch, The Lies of Locke Lamora. Okay. And that's no disrespect to Scott Lynch. Right. I'd, I'd, I'd heard about him, and he was somebody I was interested in reading, but it just, from what I'd heard, didn't make it as high on my priority list as other things. Right. When Veronica picked that as the sword, and that's what this whole book club is for, is getting people exposed to the other side, right? Right. So if you're a science fiction fan, showing you that there's great fantasy, and vice versa, if you're a fantasy fan, showing you that there's great science fiction, I was blown away by that book, especially because it fit the pattern of fantasy, but it blew it away. It just right. played with the form of fantasy so well. And I've read so many of them now that I'm like, all right, we're going to the inn, and now we're going to get the challenge, and now we're going on the journey, and now we meet the monster. And, like, Lies of Locke Lamora just turns all of that on its head. Huh. The characters are so inventive and so deep and real, and no one's safe, right? That's the other thing about George right. R. R. Martin that everybody loves. They hate that he kills your favorite character, but it's what makes it so interesting. Oh, I love it. You you don't sit there going, well, I know he's going to survive because you never know. My favorite character is going to die, and I've come to accept that. So, you know, she's already dead in my mind. So right. <laughs> if I do it that way, it's okay. Dead dead character walking. <laughs> right. Dead character walking. And um, not, only, not only are you a reader of books, but you yourself have authored a book. You have. Um, named Bowling Point. Congrats. I mean, how does that feel to be an author, a published, a published author. author? Yeah, it's amazing when you can go online and upload anything and call yourself an author. It's pretty cool. <laughs> hey. hey. Hey, no, but, but, but I think it's pretty cool, though. Um, I have it on my Kindle. I honestly say I haven't finished it, um, but uh, I'm excited to finish it. And, uh, I actually had forgotten that you had wrote this book. I remember him talking about it. A while I, yeah, back, I remember so. him. And then when I was doing my research, I was like, oh, that is right. He did write a book. I wish uh, United doing. Moon Colonies, I feel like, is a little better mm -hmm. than Boiling Point. Mm -hmm. Boiling Point I wrote in the 90s. It took me a long time. It's my first effort. Mm -hmm. I, I was in love with the concept a little too much. United Moon Colonies was something I wrote for National Novel Writing Month. Oh, it's still yeah. pretty rough. I would still never send it to a publisher, but I had fun <laughs> with it. And I feel like it's a better story. And I've got a, I've got another one that I'm going to put out hopefully by the end of this year. Mm -hmm. It's a sci another sci-fi story called Lot Beta. And that one I feel like almost is good. It's great. I, would, I have so many ideas in my head, and I would love because I used to write when I was younger. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I want to do the National Writing Month. Uh, That's what drives me forward because every year National Novel Writing Month, I've actually got two other books just sitting on my hard drive wait, waiting to be polished mm -hmm. uh, I will go and I will I'll have these stories in my head and I'll just bang them out over those 30 days and the point of National Novel Writing Month is you don't think about it too much you don't put it off you don't procrastinate you just get it out of your head and get it on paper and then what I've done both with United Moon Colonies and Lot Beta is I set a schedule that every day I work on them a little bit mm -hmm. just to just to go through and I do two passes one to fix like large grammatical errors and another to just smooth out the thing and then i give them to an editor to actually do a full edit on and then wow. i self-publish them huh that's awesome and where and where can they find these meritbooks.squarespace.com there, there you go go check them out yep. and there's they're available in multiple locations like barnes and noble itunes i i've submitted to the google play store but that apparently takes forever to get approved but there's also free versions PDFs that you can get from archive.org. It's Creative Commons. All right, you see MarriottBooks.squarespace.com. Yeah. Dot com. Okay, okay. Cool. Cool. And is that? Do you have anything else? In no, I want to talk about some food. You want to talk about some? We food? didn't talk about this on Monday, so let's talk about some food. All right. The fridge is not prepared. <sighs> so I want to talk about. Um, some food. I want to talk about food in California because I because I have to admit I'm the only one in my family who's never been to California besides Jay. So um, is it really all avocados in California? Like the niggas <laughs> believe out here. Yeah, yeah, everything. You go everything. Go grab the fly pork chops. Yeah. Actually everything in California, they just put avocados and call it California. That's style. what they do out here. Every sandwich that says California, they just put avocados on it. <laughs> That's like putting cheese on something and saying it's Wisconsin stuff. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So uh, no, not everything. There are there are good avocados out here. That part is not a lie, uh, but I don't run into them all that often. Right. Frankly. Do you uh, go out to eat much, or do you? Or are you more of a cook-in 
Okay. We go out to eat a lot, but just in the past two, three weeks, I've started cooking. Oh. Well, like so more tell than us what once you've been cooking, because that's because that's what we like to hear about. What that's have you awesome. Been so uh, today, I just took two pork chops and made a garlic ginger rub, mm. and they're sitting in the fridge, and I'm going to pan fry them when Eileen gets home. That sounds awesome. Make it, Jay. Make it happen. I, I might need to get that. Uh, he's the, I can send you the recipe. The king of yeah, yeah, I'm going to get that recipe from you. That sounds I got awesome. it off like simplyrecipes.com or something. Yeah, yeah. I, I love to cook, and I go in stages. And we're in a cooking stage now, so it's now, great. We're, we're in such of a, a huge cooking stage that on Saturday we went and got a second crock pot so we can cook two crock pot meals at once. Two. Nice. <laughs> because sometimes you, know, you don't That's feel like serious. cooking, but you want to eat well. So right. You, you, you yeah. have a crock pot meal right there. And I've been making a lot of free. stews for that just so I have it for yeah. my lunches and stuff. Oh, yeah. So one of the ones we made, um, we, are, we talked about this on Monday, but we made uh, Cajun, Cajun shrimp, shrimp and, rice. and rice. Yep. It was really good. It was really good. I finished that off today. Yeah. <laughs> but the best thing we made, I like this one the best. It was um, uh, red, beans. red beans and over, over Spanish, Spanish rice. rice, and it had pork, pork loin in it. Right. And this is the most amazing recipe. That one took 12 hours. It to took cook. 12, 12 <laughs> hours. So so the pork, you didn't even need to chew it. You just gummed it and it freaking <laughs> fell apart in your mouth. And this was so good. I can't explain to you how good it was. And um so yeah, it was and it's gone now and I think I'm about to tear up cuz no, I actually really sad. I left you some. I'm going to have some beans and rice. So, so, sorry. Or whenever you have so it. So professional. Um but but so I love the slow cooker because we work away from home and so we just throw all the stuff in the crock pot we come home we have a meal and it's great and you can make a lot of things in crock pot i'm finding you can make lasagna in the crock pot which turned out okay weirdly um really yeah i made yeah. lasagna monday i do I, I love lasagna i like there's pasta a, there's a crock pot lasagna you should try out sometime yeah it's good it's, it's amazing you just throw all the ingredients in i mean of course you have to cook the meat uh, well, and everything before. it depends That's how really you like your lasagna. lasagna it's true if you like your lasagna when you cut it out and you like it in the perfect square you know, then you don't want to do the crock pot lasagna. Yeah. If, right, because it's not going to have the right shape. Right, right, right. Now, if you just like, if, if you, you want the, if yeah. you just want all the ingredients. It's great. It's great. Yeah. So crock pots are great, and I'm glad we have two. Um, and we talked about this already, but I'll tell you, we also made a chocolate cake from, from scratch. scratch. I've never made a, a cake from scratch before. Not like a, instead of a box yes. with the mixings. Yep. Everything was from like scratch. Totally the different. frosting wow. was from scratch, even. Yep. Wow. And it was really good. It, it was, was so good. And I was so proud of me that I didn't mess it up. Cause and it's funny because Renee, she she's never really had uh, a cake made from scratch. Like, you know, all your birthday cakes were box cakes. box cakes. And my grandmother, she was the cake maker of my town. She would make the wedding cakes and everything else for people. So I was so used to always having, you know, made from scratch cake. <laughs> and when we got and we finished the cake, when it was like, man, this cake is very dense. It's dense, but it was moist. It was it very was, moist. Was yeah. See, I'm not afraid of the word moist. And now no you see what? Now you, now you have a reason why I, not to be. I have power over the word moist. Sorry, that was my word that, that <laughs> I just couldn't stand. You've conquered your fear. I've conquered my fear. The word Good. is still horrible, but I will say it without <laughs> problem. So, uh, so we love food. So, so what is your comfort food? Lasagna is definitely one. Lasagna is uh, it? Like I said, I made I made a beef and spinach lasagna mm. earlier this week, Ooh. and that that's something I definitely love. And macaroni and cheese. Oh, now, good. now, baked all right. Cheese, do you do you do the baked macaroni and cheese, or do you do like the cheesy noodle type macaroni and cheese? Because two types. Uh, I do. We do both, but my favorite is the baked. Mm. Where yeah. you get that nice thick crust of cheese over the top. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My, my mom makes a mean macaroni and cheese. Just ask Jeff. He has the recipe, and he makes it all the time. It's yeah. Funny. Definitely. Definitely. So yeah. So I love my food. Um. Since we've been losing weight, we don't do food like we used to. We used to just eat whatever we wanted, right. whenever we wanted. Now we have to pick and choose. But uh, I still love to eat my stuff that's not so good for me. That's what got me cooking was I read The Foodists by Daria Rose. Mm -hmm. And her whole thing is about how to actually have good nutrition, not do some kind of fad diet that's just going to have you put the pounds back on later. Right. And still be able to eat things you love oh, that yeah. taste good. Oh, yeah. And that's the one thing that we've learned, you know, since we had started doing the whole lose it thing, you know, starting last year. I mean, it's just. You know, one thing is that we've always, you know, we, we cooked before that, but it was more just, we didn't, we cooked because it was good, but now we're cooking because 
you know, like you said, um, that that's a huge part of, of getting healthy. Even though I love to go out to eat because I used to be a server. So going out to eat, it's it's a treat now. It's a treat to go out to eat. I'm like, ah, oh, I'm sitting here and I don't have to be the one, you know, right. hearing you complain that your steak isn't done enough, <laughs> you know. Right. So it's too red, Tom. Yeah, like, oh, this steak has this tiny bit of pink. I'm gonna die. Bring me another steak. I'm like, no, you're not gonna die. Is Just that what you're it. like, JJ? Uh, no, 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 oh, no, no. Okay. He's he's a good dinner companion. Uh, until um, unless I say the meal is fine. And then, and then this, oh, yeah. uh, no, no, we have this, <laughs> we, had this miscon- <laughs> we have a miscommunication about the word fine. And, and also fine the, means the, it's, it's really, really good. And also the word sure. Sure. In my family, sure means yes. Like if someone says, hey, do you want to go out for drinks? And you say sure. sure. Right? Yeah. yeah. That but, means yes. That means but that means for yes. me, in my family, sure meant, eh. I really don't uh, want to, okay. but... It was a signal. Yeah. Like, you could talk me into it, but I really don't want to do it. <laughs> right. So, my exactly. family would always say sure to things, and he thought that no one ever wanted to do anything with him or <laughs> everybody. I'm like, no. They hate me. That's right. Do you like me? Sure. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I definitely... I, our family sure meant yes, but it was always sure. Whereas, if you were doing it the way JJ thinks, it would be like, sure. Sure. It was a tonal, tonal difference. Right. Yeah, but Jay, there's a tonal difference. He just... <laughs> And he says fine. Well, like when someone says that your meal was fine, I think it was I mediocre. Know. It was, it, it was a C grade, right? It was a C C plus. Jay thinks yeah. it means it was a B plus A. And yeah. I'm like, when it's you say fine. my meal is fine, I'm like, yeah, it's easy to talk. See? I'm like, it's what fine. is like wrong with it? And then Jay was like, well, it means you know, if I say you're fine, I'm like, no, yeah, yeah. it's not the same way you say to a woman. It's not the same <laughs> thing. So. <laughs> That lasagna was fine. Mm. I'm like, that sounds just odd and weird and a <laughs> fetish. So that sounds bad. <laughs> so, yeah, but uh, I love to cook. I love it. It's fun. Yep. And and when I flop, I flop hard. And I just throw it away and then go on to the next. All right. So with that ending the food, we're going to go ahead and we don't have really any odds and ends or anything like we that. Don't. But we're going to go ahead and talk about our pick of the week yes. and then after our pick of the week tom we want to we want to just invite you to just self you know promote yourself i thought you were going to say okay. self-flagellate that would have been bad i don't know why i thought you were going to say that that was so weird <laughs> uh, you know that's not in my vocab <laughs> <laughs> what's our pick of the week jay oh our pick of the week is frame rate with tom mary and brian bushwood i love that show like um, i just started listening to it i'm like why haven't i been listening to this so I'm glad, I'm glad you guys are liking it yeah, um, you can find them at twit.tv slash fr, and you can also find them on iTunes um, as well as uh, Stitcher, right? Are you yeah, guys Downcast, Stitcher, Stitcher all that Pocket stuff. Cast, all those, all those places. Okay, cool. But yeah, check them out. It's a podcast, again, about um, media, streaming, you know, movies, TV shows. And you say Brian with a Brian Brushwood, right? You said that, I did right? say Brian okay. Brushwood. All right, all right. I'm Usually. just making sure you're... Yeah, but he's been missing lately. He's gone all Hollywood on me. Oh, someone needs to send out search dogs. I know he's looking for a Honda. That's all I know. <laughs> he's blowing up he cars said? and shutting down highways. He's doing crazy stuff. Oh, like with his oh, he's doing yeah. big big time stuff. Hey, if you ever need a if you ever need a guest on, man, you you feel free to um, get me up sometime. Oh my gosh, can't <laughs> you ask that. Why not? Because you know, oh, it's just me. Okay, and then, and then also with and 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 tell Eileen I said thank you again for tweeting Lamar Wilson for me. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah sure. Did because for what? Because I said I was, I was a huge fan of his. I was like, can um, you tweet him and tell him that I'm a huge fan? <laughs> that is so funny. I can't believe you did that. I did it, man. If it makes you feel any better, Jay, Lamar saw Eileen one day and was like, you know, I really wouldn't. I'd love to be a guest on one of Tom's shows sometime. I know. And I'm like, why didn't you just ask me? <laughs> And of course we had a That's awesome. That is awesome. Lamar is awesome, man. Yeah, he is okay. funny. So I started, yeah. Jay before, introduced me to him. Yeah, before I have you, I did have one question for you in, in um, within the tech news arena. Um, African Americans, you know, that's, that's one of the reasons I found Lamar. I was trying to find some, you know, tech journalists that, um, that were African American. Can you name some more that, that, that you may know? What if he isn't knowing? You put him on the spot. Oh, I did kind of put you on the spot. Eric Franklin. <laughs> See, from bam. CNET. Take that. He's great. Who? Uh, Eric Franklin. Okay. Uh, he's he's a great reviewer. We have him on Tech News, too. Actually, we just had him on a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. 
David Stevenson was a tech TV reporter who, I, last time I, I checked, was still working for Fox in San Francisco as their tech reporter. Mm -hmm. uh, so he, he's worth looking up. I'm trying okay. to think. You know, one of the problems, well, not a problem, but one of the things about internet journalism is a lot of these people are just names to me. I have no idea right, right. What, what race, ethnicity you know, how attractive exactly. they are. Or anything. Right, 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 exactly. You know, or anything like that. Uh, you know. Those are two that pop to mind right off the top. Okay, no. Like Kayla Pereira would be one too, but she is not doing tech anymore. She's now, I believe it's C CNN. Oh, wow. Doing like an anchor job. Okay. No, that was just one of the things that I had thought about because, you know, I, I know a lot of women in tech. I know a lot of, um, you know, you know, other um, tech journalists of, mm -hmm. that, of color. Yeah. That, that aren't, but I've I've lacked finding, you know, any of African American persuasion. It was just one of the things that I've always that I, I thought I would ask, and you know, and I know it's, you, you. It's you, one of the, it's one of those classic questions of like, why are there not more African Americans in X? Well, uh, you know? well, partly too. I mean, if you can look at my, you know, Renee and I both are in tech and we work in IT. I mean, you can look at our department and yeah, I'm and, pretty much the. I'm the only black female developer in the entire company. <laughs> she is. The only one. And there are only uh -huh. four females, four female developers in the entire company. So, And and in my department. I'm used to it. <laughs> so in my department, we have like 100, 200. But then in the big department, it's like 500. But it's, you know, I think we're not even 20%, not even 10%, yeah. maybe. <laughs> it's just a matter of getting it out. I right. Think, you know, it'll take time. Oh, yeah. Um, it will. But they, I mean, but minorities is 32% of African Americans do work at Humana. Yeah. So, which is a huge number, Good. actually, you know, so. Good. Look at you well, cool. pimping Humana. Well, oh. no. <laughs> no. Oh, and uh, I want you all to, to, to <laughs> congratulate Jay today. It is his five-year anniversary <laughs> with Humana. Yay. And yep. not only that, he got picked to do a uh, what they do a story. They're going to do a story on a me. A story on about him. why I had my because I. Uh, so Tom, you work. See, you love your job, right? And it's for the most part, you love your job, and it's because you enjoy going to work and you enjoy what you're doing, and you enjoy the people that you work with, which makes everything. And for me, I get that's my team. It's like. I enjoy going to work because my team, you know, is a team that I enjoy working with. They're almost like family. I even love your team. I don't even work with them. Right. So, so I mean, it's just yeah, one of the beauties awesome. out he's there. A, and he's really good at his job. I'm very proud of him. You are so too. I want to pimp him. What? No, I'm pimping you. <laughs> you can't pimp me when I'm pimping you. That's not how sure, pimping okay. goes. Speaking of pimping, uh, Tom, would you like to pimp yourself out to our chat room and all of our listeners? Sure. I'm available for hire. <laughs> just <laughs> send me an email. No, uh, Tom Meredith. TomMerritt.com is my website that has all of the things that I do. And we've, we've mentioned pretty much almost all the shows that I do. I, I know we mentioned Molly Wood, uh, and I do a show with her called It's a Thing Now. Yes, I forgot to mention that. We put out seasonally. So we put out 12 episodes at a time. It won't be out all the time. But right now we just kicked off season two. So we'll have another 10 episodes or so coming, uh, maybe nine. I think we just put out episode three, actually. But that, that's out there. I'll be starting another season of Autopilot with Scott Johnson soon Yay. where we talk about TV show pilots. And the 10 State comic that Len Peralta and I did a Kickstarter for, we're almost done with our five-issue run, and we have submitted it to Comixology. So I'm crossing my fingers that maybe by the end of August, Comixology will have signed off on that. Awesome. And we'll be able to have anybody, whether they back the Kickstarter or not, be able to read it. Okay, cool. Um, and and you were talking about um, it's a thing. I forgot totally forgot to mention that. Um, and and on episode eleven, you kind of talked about um, some after school tutoring you do, and Aww. that's where you learned about this Slender Man. Man. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, I haven't even played it yet. Right. So I have to ask. Um, not, I'm not gonna ask have you played Slender Man yet. Okay. But I I want to ask what's been. Have there been other things that you have learned while you've been giving back to the community? From Definitely. From I learn all kinds of things from those kids, uh, even if it's just perspectives mm -hmm. on on the way the world works. Or, you know, one of, I was helping one of them try to get apps onto his iPod Touch. 
that right. he had inherited from like an older brother and he wanted to be like how do i get music on here so i was like okay here's be careful don't don't use bad stuff but here's some things to go right and i'm like wow you know i i never thought of that particular problem like how do i get music when all i have is the ipod touch i don't right. have a computer right uh, you know i need to use the wi-fi at the tutoring place how do you so yeah hmm. it's never ending i haven't been doing it lately because i've been Partly because I've been so busy, and it's also been summer, so the kids have been out of school. Right. Kids are great like that. But if you ever do want to laugh. Whoops, sorry. Jay, Jay's having tech issues I over am. there. If you ever want to laugh, go and watch Jay play Slender Man, Tom. Um, <laughs> it is I haven't played it yet either. hilarious it was, thing. Well, it wasn't as good as he, it, it wasn't as good as Scott's though. Scott's Scott was probably funnier. Scott it better than I did. Yeah. I, oh, Jay's video was like 10 minutes, and he played a total of like maybe two minutes of Slender Man. It was horrible. Most of the time, he paused it and just sat there. Well, no, I couldn't pause. Oh, yeah. I thought I could pause, and when I paused, it, started it actually over. started over, and I was like, heck no, I'm not doing yeah, it. Yeah, I haven't played it, I think. And plus, that thing is, the whole Slender Man thing is all over with, so I don't have to play it anymore. Oh, yeah, it's kind of passed now, I guess. So, yes. You're right. But well, uh, we've loved having you on. Uh, thank you for coming on, uh, and uh, I'll be watching more of you. It's kind of, it's kind of, I, f I feel like I'll be stalking you. <laughs> yeah, please watching do. Watching you, so... But yeah, well, thanks for having me on. This was great. This is good fun. Good, cool. good, good. I'm glad you enjoyed yourself. But you're welcome to come on anytime you want. So, well, awesome. Um, chat room. Thanks for being here. I know. And uh, being so supportive. Buxley came in, by the way. Um, he did. Yes. Hi, Buxley. And a few yeah, other people Buxley. came in, and I'm gonna miss some crap. Sorry, people, I miss. <laughs> all right. Well, cool. You all have a great week. And um, again, we have Kim Price on Saturday night. Yep. 7:30 p.m. So you all are available. Um, so if, if you're around, don't feel pressured. Um, we'll be doing a, another live show with um, Kim Price. But um, as always, thanks again, Tom. Thanks so much. Right. You betcha. Thank you, guys. All right, All right. Talk to you later. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. That's awesome. Yay. It's so funny, Tom. I was just looking at this Horton Laser uh, website, and from 138, the editor's note is that you are no longer allowed to write show descriptions after beer. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> well, read that particular show description. It should be obvious. And then also, um, Zabby in the chat room said, thank you for recording another East Meets West. I was afraid you guys had pod faded. Oh, uh, yeah. Now, we... We may be pod fading a bit, but we will never pod fade entirely. Yeah, that's awesome. Right. We do. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You had clearly had a few. <laughs> <laughs> he was. He's uh, got a little too big into the puns there. It's pretty funny though. <laughs> a yeti size serving of news. And the thing is though, it doesn't even say yeti. It says yet. I think you missed the I, which is the great the part. Size. At first, I thought that was it. Then I read on, and then I was like, oh, now I see. Uh, All right, chat awesome. room.
Chat room, y'all are awesome. Thank you all for coming out so much. You know, again, you guys support us so much. I know. We just really had a show. That. Yeah, y'all are here again. I oh, know. But it's not because of us, of course. I, I know. It's because of Tom. So of Tom. So thanks for showing but up. thank you all for coming. Uh, y'all are great. <laughs> all right. Um, everybody, I'm going to stop the feed. And um, if we see you on Saturday, we'll see you on Saturday. If not, we'll see you all Monday. They better not miss Kim Price. That the, That's worth watching. They better not. Oh, yeah. All right. See you all. Bye, y'all. Bye.